chance to be rude to. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you can get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every Hello and welcome! My name is Klaus and welcome to another Mazda DIY video! You've seen the thumbnail and you know what's up. Brake caliper or brake calipers. You should change in pairs. Now then, let's go straight to the business. Quickly, fast, simple and dirty. What's a brake caliper? That's this device that holds the brake pads together and once you squeeze the brake pedal, this comes out and pushes the brake pads into the disc and that slows down your car. That's what a brake caliper is, see? This is a piston that when you press the brake pedal, it just pushes out. And you can see here, here's a line and here's a bleeder screw. Now, why you want to change a brake caliper? There, there's only one thing why it, it would be that. The brake piston is stuck or the seal inside is damaged. So this is how an old looks like. And this is the brand new one. So this is brand new and fresh. And as you can see, brand new and fresh, old. There's two ways you can do about this. You can rebuild this. There's a rebuild kit for almost every break. So there's a rebuild kit or you can buy a new one. Guys and girls, if you want me, want me to show you how to rebuild an old brake caliper, and you don't want to buy a new one, tell me, tell me in the comments down below. I can rebuild them. The rebuild kit is like 25. Well, I'm in, in uh, Great Britain. So uh, in here, a uh, brake rebuild kit costs 25. And a brake caliper costs like 80, but I got this for 50. So it's how you want to do it. And as you can see, there's a little difference. See the bleeder is here and the bleeder is here. It's for each side. Each side has different places of bleeder because bleeder needs to be on top because you need to bleed air out of this piston. So now as we talked about brake calipers, let's talk about the tools you will need. I will use this and I'll leave this tool or whatever this is in the description down below. No, this is not something you impregnate goats with or stuff your turkey for the Thanksgiving. I will use this to bleed the brakes as I'm alone here. Here is no one else. I'm on my own and I, I don't have the fancy brake where you just pull the vacuum and you just... This, this will do the same thing and this costs like peanuts. I'll, I'll use an 18 millimeter spanner and this is, if you can see, I took the sander to it. You can take an angle grinder and just thin it down, just make it thinner so it fits between the, the metal, so it fits here because these bolts do spin, these nuts do spin. So an 18 here and a 14 millimeter right here. They like to spin around so you can't undo them fully. But I'll show you that on the car. And tool set, a ratchet, a ratchet set, a tool set, whatever you, you have there, you can use it. A jack and to get your log nuts loose or bolts or whatever you have. I have nuts. This is a lock key, 21 mil and 17 on an impact. You can use a hand crank, whatever, whatever you have. And of course, don't forget about dot four brake fluid. I need dot four brake fluid. Boiling point exceeds 260 degrees, corrosion protection. So you need to check, check which dot it needs because now modern day cars needs dot five which is high temperature, even, even more than uh, 260 degrees. So look at manual or go online and check which dot brake fluid you need. Now let's open the bonnet or the hood and get to the cylinder. And then we take the log nuts, wheel nuts, log bolts, wheel bolts off. So bonnet up. Sorry bugs, we don't need you. So. There you go. Follow Mazda logo and in the middle, 
Okay, now the brake reservoir is always there. As long as you're in UK. If you're in Europe and it's in different places, tell me. Tell me if it's Europe in different place. This is the brake reservoir. This, see this symbol? This is where the brake fluid is inside. Right in this one. And it even says on the, on the lid. I cannot read Japanese, but it says even on the lid, see? Dot 3. D-O-T-3. So it's dot 3 and it, and it has even the symbol that you can look it up. So you need dot 3 fluid. And this is a filter. So no br shit goes inside the fluid because you don't want it. Now, if you have a quick question where to jack up the car, right here. Here's the wheel and here's the door. Right here is, a, is the seal. You can see the metal is running along there. You see this space? He, here is especially a gap and here it's all flat and here's a gap. Here's a gap. This is the jacking point. You can see even here is a rib and here's a here's like a rib. So that's from where you jack up the car. And that's how you know that the car is jacked up properly. Try to spin the wheel with one hand. You can hear it. Can you hear it? It's touching all the time. Because it's touching the brake pads. You should be able to free spin it, see? Ah. See? I can spin the wheel. Oh, hold up with me. See, I can. I can spin the wheel, but I need force. And that's not how it should be. Once we change the brake caliper and bleed it, I'll show you. I'll show you how, how, it, how it should be. I always put the wheel under the car for safety. If jack fails or anything fails, it will land on the wheel. Now we've gotten this far. You can see the hub. Oh, I can't spin it. You, you have access to the brake caliper and quickly before 18 mil goes right here. See, 18 mil. And I had to shave it for that reason. And this is a 12 mil right here. So 18, 12. 18, 12, and this is a 12, too. So you can see. 12 mil. You can see it's moving. This, I would spray some DW40 before you undo it. If you break this bolt, you will have a bad day and the car will be sitting there where you left it. Because these brakes won't be working anymore. So we need to undo these and get this piston, this caliper off. Once you loosen this, the brake fluid will start to drip down. You don't want brake fluid on the discs or on the pads. Do it away from all this stuff. It's bad. Basically it's bad. I will I'll have to do it quickly because as you can see, I don't have a drift pan or anything else. Basically I unscrew this and there will be two copper washers. One will be in front, one will be at the metal here. You need to transfer them to the new one. You can see right here is a hole and here is a leg. That leg needs to go in the hole so you know it's right. And do not twist this cable. This has brake fluid in it. If you twist it or kink it, 
it might not work or even worst case you will have no flow and then you will have to redo this all again i have to do it fast so we don't leak enough brake fluid out so the brake reservoir is empty so keep an eye on the brake reservoir so it's full if you have any air in the brake reservoir you will push it through the lines and then the bleeding process will take longer three times longer look at the level of brake fluid right now see it's on, to on top of the filter just now the brake fluid let's check after we done the bleeding you will see how low it is Did you see that, how stuck it was? God damn, and see, it's dripping down already. And it's really slippery and messy, so I cannot wait. I do apologize, what, what you will see, you will see. I literally have to rush this through, just put it on, because the fluid will be leaking. See? Ooh. Now I need to get this hose off. Oh my god, this is even a mess. There you go. Now, if you look, see there isn't an O-ring. That means the O-ring is right here. I found it. So, one O-ring is right here. You see the shiny? If you can see, there is shiny and there is shiny. So, two shiny parts. And on the bolt, see, it has holes. And that's how the brake fluid is going in. And you can see that my hands are slippery, God damn it. So now I need to put the bolt through and screw it right in the new one. So... As you can see, now it needs to go like that. Yes, it's going on. I cleaned all the area. I cleaned everything. I cleaned even this with uh, brake clean, this with brake clean, everything else. Now, as you see, I attached. This is here. This is here. Here is a copper washer, if you can see. Right there is a shiny copper washer. And right there is a copper washer. I know if you can see, yeah, see? Here's a copper washer, copper washer. You need a copper washer, otherwise it will leak. And right now we aren't out of woods yet. Because once we put the pedal on and this squeezes the pads together, if it can start dripping and then you'll actually need to check the ground and tighten this bolt if if it needs. Remember I I showed you the brake reservoir, how high it was. This was fully with fluid. See how low it is now? That's why I fill it up. And as you're undoing it, if you mess up like I messed up so much, that's why you never know what will happen. By the way, gloves, 
are not your best friend. So now let's put it back on the pads. I'll add some copper grease here or antices on the backs because this all is fine. I checked this all is fine. I need to put back the last tab right here. And then we put this on and bleed the brakes. All right then, so you checked everything here. Everything looks fine. Now we can attach back the caliper and start the bleeding process because right now it's just empty. So let's put it back. Make sure your brake line isn't messed up or anything. You can just slide it on. It shouldn't be even tight because it's brand new. So the pistons sh shouldn't have even pressed together. So align the bolts and screw them in. Now that's it. This is not moving anywhere. Only, see? Now you can see how it slides. How the pins work. See how the pins are working. Now let's start the fun part, the bleeding process. This is the bleeder screw. And you need to put on a, an wrench. You need to put on a wrench. You cannot put on a socket because here will be fluid coming out. Right here from this nipple. So this is 8 mm and you can see right now if you open this up nothing is coming out see now here oh, it's coming out it's coming out it's coming out now as you can see i topped topped up the reservoir up to maximum line right here you can see the liquid the dark liquid it isn't dark it's up to the max line this is the max line so now i'm gonna bleed this so this nipple right here i'll attach the hose this one and then open this and suck that's what she said As you can see how it's dripping right now. This should be bled. Okay, we don't have any leaks anymore. I just had to tighten the uh, this bolt even more. These are crush washers. They are called copper washers. They are crush washers. You need to crush them. Now as the car is on, we should not see any drips anymore. I'll wedge again the, the pod so the brakes are on. If I open this and hold the blue paper, it should squirt out. Not drip down, but squirt out. Watch out, squirt is coming. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you did you catch it? Yeah, the tripod did catch it. Not not you catch it, but the tripod did. Just pump the brake again. I pumped the brake, so it should again squirt like that out. Did you see that? That was nice. I like that. I like that, that's good. And another one, just for you, just for funsies, just for fun. 
you didn't see any bubbles or any like that kind of sound so that means it's fully bled the brakes are fully bled okay let's tighten the, the screw let's let's fully tighten this put the cap on done done brakes are done look at this new new so you can see how far it went from right here to and that's the pressure now let's check it because now i can physically spin the rotor and nothing is happening i'll put the wheel on for a better demonstration for you so you actually can physically see it now you can see the wheel see i can spin it with with one finger no problem at all see so let me activate the brakes so it goes good tick tink and, and then if i let the brakes go it should still be free spinning this is just a test that's why not all of them are on So I press the brake pedal, start the car. So it spins freely right now, see? Still one finger. So we fixed that problem. Now let's see if, once the brake pedal is on, if the wheel spins still, because it should not spin. It sh the caliper should just squeeze together and not let this wheel spin at all. This is the moment right now. So you can see the brakes are on and i wedged the brakes so this should not spin it's not spinning it's not spinning let me show you i'm having i need to use force just to spin them and i did not press the brakes fully because this just barely keeps it pushed barely I can press the pedal even harder. Take off the wheel and check if there aren't any slow leaks behind. Because slow leaks can happen. Trust me, it can happen. And then you will be running out of brake fluid and then you fully run out of brake. That's not something you want, I want, or anybody else wants. And remember, I'm not a mechanic, I'm a DIY mechanic. I'm a hack. So I have to make triple show, triple show, or how many shorts I want. That I don't kill myself and I don't kill people around and people who are watching that I don't kill them too. I don't send them to death. I see fluid. I see fluid on the wheels. And we have a leak. You see this? We have a leak right here. This nut needs to be tightened even more. Okay, this should be good. Okay. Now it should be tight enough. I'll start the car again and press the pedal and let's see how it goes now. And I'll move the wheels inwards. So let, let's see. Let's see how it will look like. You can see we have a small leak. That means copper washers are bad. So we need to change the copper washer. You should be changing copper washer. A few moments later. Time to double confirm everything. Here tighten. Here dry, not leaking. Here dry, not leaking. Nothing is leaking here. Everything is fine here. This is fine. The brake actually stops. It's been bled. You saw the line just shooting. This is double checked. Once, once we drop the car down, we will top up the fluid and check the wheel nuts. 
So let's put the wheel back on. That's it. It's all changed and it's all nice. Hope you liked this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.